Okay, in this video I am going to be showing you some new stuff that I've uh, discovered and new methods that I've uh, sort of worked out to get a much accurate, much more accurate uh, avatar into Maya Star. Okay, um, and, and what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to show you the steps so that if all you need to know or all you want to know is the steps, you can just watch the first part of this video and, and get the steps. I'm going to try to do a minimal explanation of each step so that if you don't feel like watching the whole video, you won't have to. Um, although it is always a good idea <laughs> to watch the whole video um, because there's a lot of good information. But if you just want to learn the, 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 the meaty stuff that you really need to know, it'll just be at the beginning of this video. And I'll, I'll let you know when the the stuff that you really need to know is all done and what I'm going to then transition into a more detailed explanation. Okay, so if the dev kit provider provided you with a DAE or an FBX that comes in large, you know, like a hundred times bigger uh, than it should be and especially if it's misshapen, um, uh, then you need to to do this following procedure and it's a new there's I've added a new sort of step that you'll have to do manually um, I can't automate it because it's, it's different on or yeah the automating this step would be very difficult but I'll I'll get to that in a minute and I'll let you know that step in in a minute okay so I'm going to demonstrate on Shadeen Monroe's slink avatar hourglass that just happens to be my favorite and I and I happen to know uh, Shadeen. We've been friends for like well over ten years, um, and so hers is a great, great example of of what you need to do. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is if they provide you a blender uh, a blender file. Oh, and I should say the very first thing you really need to know is you need to ask the dev kit provider you know the mesh body designer you need to ask them a couple of questions because it's really important to know is one what program did they rig their avatar in did they rig it in Maya or did they rig it in blender if they said they rigged it in blender you need to know did they use Avastar to export out their DAE that they uploaded to Second Life okay if they say um, uh, Bento Buddy, which is another plugin you can get for Blender that exports out a DAE. Uh, then I haven't gotten Blender Buddy to know 100% for sure if if it's as necessary um, to know. Uh, but it, it, I think it does come in big. It does come in misshapen, so it should follow the same procedures it just doesn't have slider settings so bent so bento buddy when it exports out a DAE it doesn't bake in the slider settings because there is no sliders apparent sliders in bento buddy for blender so um, but you could do the following procedure or the the procedure the that I'm going to get into a little bit later okay so you need to ask them what program did you rig the avatar in did you use Maya? Did you use Blender? If you use Blender, which program did you use? Which plugin did you use to export out the DAE? Did you use Avastar? Did you use uh, ben, uh, Bento Buddy? Or did you use somehow use the Blender uh, built-in Colada DAE exporter? Supposedly there is a way to get that to work. I've never been able to get it to work myself, but supposedly there is a way to get that to work. So those you need to know that if they say if they say Maya you need to know did you rig your DAE with using Maya star and the Maya star skeleton you know um, and and so that's really important to know too so those are really super important things to know because depending on what they say it will have different consequences so I'm going to show you the consequences of 
of Blender. I already did a video earlier showing that it does bake out the slider settings, you know. And so this first part I'm, I'm going to demonstrate with Blender using Avastar is the same as that video where you're, you're not changing any of the slider settings. You're just simply exporting out a DAE. Okay. So, but before you do that, what you need to do is you need to open up a notepad or write down on a piece of paper the slider settings that are in the Blender file when you open it up. So you need to write down 53, 23, 5. Now these little green arrows indicate that it's not the Second Life default shape. You know, uh, when you go to Second Life default shape, it gets rid of all these custom. Now this is the Second Life default shape. And even if, now I'm going to control Z to get it back, even the neutral uh, bone position doesn't use those, those settings. So Shadeen, either on purpose or accidentally, because she told me she rigged to the neutral bone settings, but it doesn't matter if she did her initial rigging to the neutral bone settings. What matters is the slider settings that they used when they exported. So if they say, I exported using Avastar, say, I need to know what slider settings you used when you exported out, because those get baked into the avatar body. They may not be aware that they did that. Now, I happen to know that these slider settings that are in here when you first open it up are correct, because I, after I exported the DAE out of this body, I immediately uploaded it to Second Life and wore it at the same time I wore uh, the hourglass. And it, and it was perfect, or pretty much darn near perfect. So I know that these slider settings are probably most likely, I'm 99% sure, are the slider settings that Shadeen Monroe used when she exported out her DAE that she uploaded to Second Life. Okay. And so what you want to do, like I said, you want to write down these numbers. And that's what I did, is I wrote down the numbers and I put an asterisk next to the numbers that had the little green arrow indicating that they were not, uh, that they were different. They were, they were different than, um, than the SL default shape. And we already know that these two are different than the neutral bind shape. Okay, so I wrote them down and I went in here. And so you're going to need Avastar. If they say they used Avastar, you're going to need Avastar. Um, and then you can go to Torso and write down these numbers. And that's what I did. Now this 37 I'll, I'll explain later. Um, but I wrote them down. And then the same goes for the legs. Those are really the only slider settings that you really need to know. Because it's just the body. It's not the head. It's not the hands. You know, it's not the feet. It's just the body. So body, torso, and legs, those are the most important slider settings that you need to know for a mesh body. Um, okay, so after you do that, you write it down, either on a piece of paper or save it on a text file, whatever you want to do. You're going to export out your body. So I have the body selected. You know, I have the eyeball turned on and the little arrow. That means it's locked or unlocked. So it's unlocked right now. It means it's selectable. I selected it. I don't have to select the avatar mesh or the, the, um, the skeleton or anything like that. I just have to select the body. And then I go... Um, to File, Collada Avastar DAE, and save it on my desktop. And you know, you click on Advanced. The only thing I changed in the default settings is I clicked Use Bind Pose. I don't even think that matters, but I know that this happens to work, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay. And um, uh, and then I exported it out. Uh, let's see. And I, I'm exporting out as Hourglass Video DAE. Okay, it's exported out. The next thing you want to do is you want to open up that file in, uh, in a word processor. And I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to open it up. Okay, 
So I've opened it up in a word processor and this is the new, this is the new part, the new procedure. Okay. And this is why I can't really automate it because you have to, you have to actually edit the text file. So all you have to do is change one number. All you have to do is change this number here from one to 0, 0.01 and then save. why it's taking so long to save. It's just a text file. I'm going to pause it while it's finishing saving. Okay, so it's finished saving and that's all I had to do. Change that number one to 0 0.01 because if you remember when you would import a DAE from Avastar it would come in really huge and misshapen and so I thought I'll just make it a hundred times smaller when I import it because I was trying to manually make it smaller and all this kind of stuff and nothing was working nothing was working. So okay now I'm gonna go over to Maya. Okay so here I am in Maya and I'm going to uh, go to the dev kit prepper or dev kit import I mean. Um, this method you do not do not do step two dev kit prepper. So we're gonna import the DAE first and there's the hour class for video DAE. Okay, and it does come in misshapen. That is totally fine. And if you remember, it used to come in misshapen where it was huge. It was really big. It was really tall. And um, uh, and so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, you can ungroup this. You can just go edit ungroup. So it's just the M pelvis. So I ungrouped it. So it's just the M pelvis. It's all the right size and everything. It's in the right position and, and everything is cool. So now I'm just going to maestroize it. Female, bento, maestroize, dev kit. Okay. And it looks fine. Very first thing I'm going to do next so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to try to just do the steps. So now I would just be on the safe side. Go skin to skin weight tools. Create bind post just to be on the safe side. Okay. The ne very next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to detach the skin. Now we can close this. We don't need this any longer. Okay. So we're going to um, detach the skin. And anytime you do that, you want to keep a close eye out for, to see if the mesh changes shape. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, detach skin. Oh, I'm going to tear it off so you can actually see it better. Okay, and you notice it has a skin cluster. That means it's rigged. I'm going to detach the skin. Now watch the mesh. Did you see it change shape? It did change shape, which means that tells us that that's not the bind pose for that mesh shape. The mesh avatar shape should not change shape. Okay, when you when you do, um, if it does, in this case, it, it does mean that that is not the bind pose for this mesh. Okay, so I'm gonna. First, I'm going to export out an OBJ. Now that it's been uh, detached and, and uh, we detach the skin, so I'm going to export the selection. I'm going to export out an OBJ. And we're going to call this Video Unrigged. I'm going to save over it. Okay, and it's been saved over. Now I'm just going to control Z back to where you get the skin cluster and you saw it change shape again. Okay. And we can get rid of this for now. Okay. So I'm going to put this on its own layer and I'm going to name this original. You got to put an underscore if you're going to have um, two words. When you create a layer this is the only place in Maya where you can't just go space and then type another word. It doesn't put the underscore in there automatically when you hit save. You'll get an error. So this is original rigged. Okay, and you have to hit save. 
or click on save. Okay, so now this one is rigged. And now we're going to import the OBJ video unrigged. Okay, I'm going to select it. We'll call this OBJ. So it's the OBJ mesh. And I'm going to put on its own layer. And double click there. And I'm just going to call this OBJ. OBJ. Will it allow me to do that? Or will it say there's something already in there with that name? Yes. Okay. OBJ import. Imported. Okay. It wouldn't let me name it just OBJ because it was already some, another object in the named just OBJ. Okay. So now we got that. And the nice thing is it comes in with a Lambert, so it's a different color. And if we show both of them, we see that it's not the right shape. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing, uh, uh, gray, you know, dark gray poking through. And I'm going to hide the skeleton just because it makes it easier to select things. You can see like the arms are shorter. Uh, the shoulders are something different. If you look closely at the neck, you see there's a gap between the two. Okay, so what we're going to do is, okay, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to use the sliders. So I'm going to, first I'm going to, I'm going to uh, wireframe unshaded, and I'm going to turn on x-ray. And you can, you can really see a shadow, you know, between the two. So you can see it's a different shape. Even the legs, you know. So what we're going to do next is we are going to uh, open up the female avatar appearance editor and we are going to set the slider settings to the same values that we had in that she had in blender okay so 53 now the ones without the asterisk they are all the same as in Maya star see when you click okay the default is 53 when you apply slider since 53 is entered in here if we went apply all sliders, it would apply 53 um, and it would apply all these. So it, so the only ones we have to really change are the one with the asterisk. And so if we come in here and, um, but we will apply all. So let's apply all just to, to start off with, because you really need to, because the, the, you really need to apply all the sliders. So we're going to apply all and we see it did change. Okay, it did change, but now we're going to input the uh, these numbers. So we have 23 and 5, so 23, and see, you can see it changing, and 5, and it's already starting to get closer. Okay, uh, hover height at 50 is just fine, you don't want to change that. And then we're going to go to torso, and we see 31 and 69, 31, 69, and look at that. It's, it's, it's starting to look better and better. And now we go down to 50, so 31, 69, then you have 50 there, and so this is the next one down. So if you see 39, 69, 50, 51, that means that's the fourth one down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now she has it set to 51. Oops, why didn't it go in there? 51. There we go. Okay. And then just below the number 19, she put to 52. It's easier just to look for number 19 than count them. And she did 52. Okay. And then you go to legs. And she has, at the very top, 45. 45, enter. Ooh, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So, but you still see stuff around, uh, around the breasts. You know, now that would tell me, that would indicate to me that there's something wrong with the shoulders. That there's something wrong with the shoulders, because if it was just the arm length, 
because if you look over here, there's a big gap in the arm length. So you think, well, it might be the arm length. But also, like I said, it kind of gives you a clue. The shoulders do have an effect on this whole area. So let's play around with the shoulders. So go back to torso. And what you can do is you can just start playing with them until it looks like it's... Now, is that perfect? Perfect? That says 36. Well, that really does look perfect to me. Okay, let's go in the outliner and select both of them at the same time. Now, see there's a bit. So let's try. It looks really close. Uh, so you got 36. Let's try 37. 38. Okay, let's try 37. Okay, I think that's just about perfect. I mean, it's it's as close as it's going to get, because if you go 36, moves too far in. If you go 39, it's going too far the other way. And you can always kind of come to here on the on the arm and let's try 38 37 yeah 37 yeah 38 a little bit too long 37 okay uh, 37 looks like it's just as good as it's going to get. Now we did try 36. Now you can try 36. No, see, it's, it's not. 38. See, 38, you have too much. So it is definitely 37. Because it's the most even. So 37. Okay. Okay, so now we know the slider settings. So so that's why I put a 37 here and I put a double asterisk. So the single asterisk is is the one that worked is that the one that was in Blender and 37 is the one um that worked in Maya Star. So I wrote it down. So then you save it someplace. And now we need to do a custom bind pose to make sure we keep this bind pose because this tells us that this is the bind pose, the bone positions that you want to rig all your mesh to for for this for this body. So we go create bind pose. So now if we go like this and we want to go back to the bind pose, you just go my star, go to bind pose. And you see it does go back to exactly. So that's the bind pose that you want to use. Now I could also have, uh, theoretically, you should be able to go reset skeleton and go apply all, and it goes right back. Okay. And let's see, go to bind pose. And yeah, it made no difference. Awesome. Okay, so right. So that's the bind pose that you want to use to rig all your mesh to. Uh, I think something you really want to also look out for, and I just discovered this today. <laughs> oh no. Okay. If you expand the skeleton. Now she doesn't rig at all to the lower back. She only rigs to the upper back. So you want to select the upper back. If, she ha if there was 
if there was the lower back in the bones, you'd want to check the, this too, because there's two bones that I messed up on, I guess, years and years and years ago when I made the original skeleton. Go to Attribute Editor. See this segment, uh, Scale Compensate? I didn't turn those on. And see what happens? Now this means that in Blender, they have Scale Segment Compensate turned on. And it automatically comes in when you import um, the, the, the one from Blender. So this normally, if it's a Blender, you, it will automatically turn it on. I just want you to be aware of it. Because if they say that they created the avatar using MayaStar, that meant most likely this needs to be off. And you can turn it on and off and see if, it, if it's going to make a difference. I think that's what happened with the legacy male avatar. Or, or was it Jake? I think No, it was Jake. Uh, that we had to either turn this on or turn it off in order to get it to, to pop right. So it's the, it's the upper back and the lower back that has that problem in Maya Star that I had messed up all those years ago and didn't have a segment scale compensation compensate on. Now what does that mean? That means any any avatar use that uses Maya Star or the Maya Star skeleton most likely had that accidentally turned off because I screwed up all those years ago. And that means you must rig yours to the same. And you'll be able to tell when you're doing these procedures, is, does it have to be on or off? So whichever looks better is you turn it on or you turn it off. Okay, I wanted to make sure that you knew that. I had to live up to my mistake and let you know about it because it does affect you. The lower back is going to be affecting the lower the lower back. But since she didn't rig it to the lower the lower um the lower back, it's not in the skeleton here. So she didn't she, so Shadeen did not rig her avatar to the lower back. And each each um avatar creator chooses which bones they want to rig to and which bones they don't want to rig to. Okay. And this method also automatically brings in whatever joint orientation they were using. So the the video that I show um, how to make a, a custom joint orientations, you don't have to worry about that when you're importing the DAE. Um, uh, at least from Avastar. They seem to come in automatically. And so, what happens if I run this? It did things, it did move things slightly, but not really for the better. Yeah, not really for the better. So you want to use that. So like I said, you could try and see if that helps um, when you're experimenting to try to get it to be as close as possible. Um, and um, you know, to get it as close as possible, uh, to try to to, to to do that, and if it doesn't work, just control Z, get it back. So, okay. So, at this point, what I would normally do is, um, is that on? Okay, turn that off. Is, and you can see it's, it's as close as it's going to get. I don't think there's any other slider settings that are going to get it any closer than that. And you saw there was no real no real shadows. Okay. So um, the next thing I would do is now if the mesh body designer you gotta look at your TOS your agreement do they say you cannot upload the uh, dev kit body to Second Life if they say you can't you're not allowed to upload the dev kit body to Second Life what you'll have to do is make a um, a body a what suit or a bodysuit in Marvelous Designer or whatever program you're going to use and then shrink wrap it to the body shape and copy the weights over and then upload that to check to see how accurate it is. It is. Um, now I'm going to turn off the imported OPJ. 
Okay. But if they can, if they do allow you to do that, like Shadeen Monroe's, I don't know if she does, allows it or not. I got permission from her when I was working with her. Um, when she was, I was helping her get the dev kit, um, working for Maya. And in fact, I got to contact her and tell her to watch this video <laughs> and let her know, Hey, I found some new stuff out, makes it much more accurate. Do this and this and this and this. So I need to contact her and let her know. But a couple years ago when I was helping her with the dev kit, uh, to help her get the bodies for Maya users and Maya star users, uh, we, I didn't know what I know now. And uh, she gave me permission to upload it. So I don't know if she has it in her TOS that you can up, that you're not allowed to upload it, but I do have permission. So what I did was I selected the rigged body. I duplicated it just like before. And there's the duplicate. So I'm going to rename this hourglass one or hourglass duplicate. So, so you know, it's the duplicate. And we already know we're in the bind pose position, you know, um, and, uh, or we'll find out here in a second, because we did that custom bind pose. I'm going to find, select the hierarchy, uh, control, select the duplicate in the, in the outliner. Uh, I hold down the control key. If you hold down the, the shift key, it selects everything in between. So I'm going to, and we do know we have the, all the bones selected, control, select that and then I'm going to do smooth bind skin and that was the bind pose we happen to be in so um, now this is rigged but it has the default rigging on it so you want to copy the skin weights from the original control click the duplicate my star copy skin weights copy skin weights and so then I would export this out as a DAE to upload to Second Life and wear it. And so uh, last thing you always do before you export out your DAE is remove unused influences. Okay, and it did remove unused influences. Oh, animation preferences. Where's my script editor? Okay, I gotta open up my script editor. Okay, and yeah, it removed nine unused influences. Now, I happen to know that her body itself, if you were to count all the bones, select hierarchy, it only has 39 bones in the skeleton. So it'd be well below the 110 bone limit. You're only allowed up to 110 bones to be rigged to any one mesh. And so, but in different dev kits might have more bones. They may come in with all the face bones. And so you would need to, then it's always good practice to remove unused influences because that way you, you'll, that's 99% of the time when somebody doesn't get the, the, um, the skin weights option, 99% uh, of the time it, it's because there's too many, they've rigged the, the mesh clothing or mesh body to too many bones. Um, if you're, cause you can make your own mesh body using Maya star if you want to. Um, uh, it's, it's not just for making clothes. Okay. So then I would upload it and I would wear it and you'd see if it's how accurate it is, you know, uh, by how much poke through. Now, even this one, there's going to be a little bit of poke through at certain poses because this is not the same mesh as the mesh body in second life. You know, um, it has edge loops in areas where the original or the actual body that you buy from, uh, slink doesn't have it because, you know, cause so, so it has slightly different edge, edge loops and stuff and edge flow. So you're always going to get a little bit of poke through, um, with, you know, but you can tell it's, it's pretty much almost darn near perfect. Um, so, and that's as good as it's going to get. Now, the other thing, the last thing you really need to know, the last thing you really, really, really need to know is, um, is that whenever, whatever clothing you're rigging to, uh, let's delete this cause we don't need it anymore, but this, oh, and you can see it, it, 
it's all working just fine. Everything is fine. Um, the uh, let's go to buying post. We're gonna put buying post. Go to buying post. Okay. I'm just gonna delete this one. We the duplicate. We don't really need it anymore. Okay. So say the last thing you really need to know is when you click on the mesh body. Look over here. It has a rotate of, of 90 degrees. Everything that comes out of Blender has a Z rotate of 90 degrees on it, which means that's why that's one of the reasons why you need to ask, did they rig their mesh clothing or their mesh body in Blender? And if they used Avastar, I'm pretty sure um, I'd be willing to bet that uh, Bento Buddy also is at 90 degrees. I don't have Bento Buddy, so I don't know 100% for sure yet. Um, but I'd be willing to bet because just Blender is different. Blender is Y up. And so they, it makes the avatar have to face a weird position. So, okay. So say you have to make, or you make mesh clothing for this avatar, or you make a bodysuit to, to cut, to, to check it. When you do that, we'll pretend this OBJ is the, uh, is the mesh bodysuit that you made. Okay. It too has to have a rotate of 90 degrees on Z axes. Now you see when I imported it, it came in with zero and it's not going to be 100% accurate. It has to have a rotation of 90 degrees. Well, how do you get rotation of 90 degrees? Well, you rotate it negative 90 degrees first when it's unrigged before you do your rigging. And this would be the same true for your mesh clothing is you rotate it 90 degrees, you do freeze transformation on it, and then you rotate it 90 degrees again. So now this one has the same exact rotation as this one does. Believe it or not, it makes a difference. Now when you op when you upload your your DAE that you make, so say we we rotated it, right? And now we're going to do the same exact thing. Uh, select hierarchy. Control select the OBJ. Uh, let's tear this off. Smooth bind skin. And then you go uh, select the original rigged and then hold down the control. Select your, your clothes or whatever you, you're going to be uh, that you're making. Um, come over here to copy skin weights. These are the settings I use. You can play around with them. Use different settings if you want. I just find that these tend to do give me a better result. Copy. And now it's rigged. And then if I make sure I click on just the OBJ again, it looked like it was the only thing selected, but you notice when I clicked on it again, it did change slightly. And then remove unused influences. And it, it did it so fast. Oh, yeah, I'm missing the, the thing down here. Uh, but yeah, I opened up the script editor and say that it removed nine bones and it's ready to export out as a DAE. And then when you upload it to Second Life, at least Firestorm warns you that, hey, this mesh was facing the X direction, you know, or something like that in the warning. Uh, just ignore it. Just upload it. Do not upload it with custom bone positions. Like I said, do not upload it with custom bone positions. Do not you know, even though this is technically custom bone positions, do not have that set. And so, um, awesome. So that's it. That's the procedure uh, for for uh, doing this. And I have checked this. This is super accurate now. Way more accurate than even my old Maya Star uh, Slink uh avatar that was that Shindine was giving out. That's why I need to contact her and say, hey, look, here's a video. Watch it. You can do it yourself or let me know. I'll send her the file and she can uh, she can um, distribute it. Um, but yeah, so uh, so that's what you need to do. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail, um, mainly in how to export out uh, an, OB, uh, an OBJ for Marvelous Designer. So I'm going to go over that real quick. Um, but yeah, so the video is basically over at this point. If you want to know, well, how do I, how do I do that? I do have a video 
I do have a video uh, for that, how to export out an OBJ uh, for Marvelous Designer. Um, but I'll just go over it real quick. Here's the rigged one. You, okay, we're going to show the skeleton again. So what you want to do is you duplicate it, right? And then you need to unlock it. Unlock selected. And then you're going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Whoops, too far. 90 degrees. Or I could have just type, typed it in. And then you want to lay it on her, on her back 90 degrees. And then what you want to do is you want to make her 100 times bigger. Okay, and then you want to freeze transformation. And then you want to close the holes. I'm not sure if you have to close the holes or not. I always do. So double click, and I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard to get the select tool and then I'm just going to hold down the shift key and double click because I'm going to close all the holes all at once. Okay and then I'm just going to go up to mesh, fill hole. Okay always a good idea to delete history as you go along, although you don't really have to. And then I would export this out as an OBJ. Export selection. And it's going to be Hourglass T-Pose, and I turned off materials, so you don't need to do it. So I'm just going to resave over that. Okay, go back to the small avatar. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put her in a different pose. I do not use in Marvelous Designer where you import the skeleton too and you can rotate the, the bones, mainly because you can't rotate, you can't see, you can't enter in a number, and you can't see what the what the rotations are. So if you do it this way, I'm going to do 45 on the arms. And you can you can do this for as many poses as you want. So if you don't like the arms at 45, you don't have to do the arms at 45. And then rotate this out. That's too much. We'll say five. Most people do five. And then negative five to go the other way. And you select the mesh and you duplicate it again. You unlock it. And then, see, I could just come in here and go zero. Or I could have rotated it manually like I did last time. Put her on her back. Or I could have entered negative 90 there. It's just however you want to do it. And then make her 100 times bigger. So I'm clicking the first field. Hold down the shift key. Click on the next one. And then I can just enter them all at the same time. And then hit enter. Okay, and then hit F on the keyboard. And let's hide that one, or you can put it on its own layer. Okay, here's this. Here's this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to edge. If I can get this being all stubborn, I want that. That one. There we go. Oh, and hit Q on the keyboard to get the select tool. Double click while holding down the shift key.
fill in the hole. Go to object mode, export selection, and we'll do the, this is A pose. So I want to, oh, or, yeah, okay. So why am I exporting out these OBJs? Because in, in, in Marvelous Designer, you can switch between the two poses and it, it basically creates a blend shape. And I'll show you, um, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to open up Marvelous Designer, but let's say, say we, say we want to see, uh, both of them. Oh, so you select it here and then you turn the visibility back to on. One is on, zero is off. Okay, so say we want to make a blend shape between these two. You go uh, select one, select the second one, shift select the second one, uh, go to, I believe it's in your animation. Yours might be different because newer versions of Maya have things differently. And we're going to create a blend shape. Let's see, what are my options? Check topology, local world. Okay, if we go create. Okay, now that a blend shape has been created, you can select one of them and zero to one. Why did that go negative 90? Oh, because it was at the world. Okay, let's put that back to zero. Oh, you know what it was? Okay, let's control Z where we get back to the blend shape. I made a boo-boo. I forgot to freeze transformation. Freeze transforms. Now these are the same. Okay, and so I would need to make sure that I export selection a pose. Okay. So select your first one, select your second one, create deformers, blend shape. And now if I select uh, a blend shape, so you, you know which one you need because one will have a blend shape, one won't. And then you change it from, so if you click there and you hold down your middle mouse button, see, you should change the shape. And once you do that, you can get rid of this one. So in Marvelous Designer, you can import either or, and then you can tell it to uh, go between the two shapes. And what will happen is it will, it will it creates a blend shape and it will slowly go like this while it has the, the um, physics simulator on so that your clothes change shape at the same time. And so you could make in Marvelous Designer, it's easier to make a pair of pants in the A-pose because, watch, when she, when she's not in the A-pose, well, this one isn't too bad. She's got a little bit of, of um, one leg going inside the other. And to try to get clothes to make a pair of pants in Marvelous Designer, um, with these two meshes going inside each other gets to be a real pain. And so it is actually, whoops, how did I do that? It's actually easier to, uh, to make clothes in Marvelous Designer with her legs slightly, slightly apart. And it doesn't have to be five degrees. You can make it one degree. You can, you know, so that it's almost straight up and down, but just has a little bit of a gap. And then after you make your, your mesh pants um, in Marvelous Designer, before you export them out, you could uh, switch it to the T-pose and then export it out. Because you know that's the pose that you're going to be rigging your clothes to, is the T-pose. And, um, or you could rig, it, rig the pants in, okay, say you make your pants in the A-pose, in Marvelous Designer, 
and you don't want to put them to the, to, to the T pose because you're going to want to retopologize them. And it's easier to retopologize them when there's a gap between our legs. So say you did, you retopologized them in this A pose, and you want you want to rig them. Now the, the pants, the legs are not as important as the arms. Um, but you could retopologize your pants in the A pose, put them on here, put them on the avatar, you know, do custom bind pose, or you know you do Maya Star uh, um, custom bind pose. You rig your pants in the A pose, right? I would I would um yeah, you rig your you rig your pants in the A pose. But you want to to make sure that it's absolutely 100% perfect. If you if you were like doing yoga pants or something like that that are super skin tight, and you wanted them to be super accurate, um, uh, eventually you want to rig them in the T pose. So after you rig them in the A pose, then you would, um, in this case, you could go after you've got them rigged, you can go reset skeleton, apply all, and then duplicate the pants. So now they're in the A pose, and, um, oh, her breasts are still big. <laughs> uh, apply, you know, so you, you rig them in the, in the A pose, you switch it back to the T pose, and you, you apply the sliders to get it back to the way it's supposed to be. Uh, then you would do, uh, you'd switch it back to custom bind pose, create bind pose. Then you would duplicate your pants, so they're unrigged. But now they're, they've been reshaped to be in the T pose. And I would, instead of copying the weights over again, since you've already rigged them, because if you try to rig them now and copy the weights over, you're, you're going to have a problem, you know, especially in between the legs. So you've already rigged them to, to rig really nice and move really nice. I would use Dora. I would export out the weights from the T pose version. And then after you select all the bones, um, do a quick smooth bind, then I would import the weights from Dora. And the same thing with a shirt. If you were doing a shirt, um, you do not want to rig the shirt in, uh, in the A pose. Because the shoulders will get really, really messed up. You know, you might, if you, if you did do your shirt in Marvelous Designer in the A pose, you could do the same thing, rig it in the, in the A pose in, in Maya, then, uh, put it to the T pose, duplicate it, and then copy, and then either, probably, I would probably then just copy the weights from it in the A pose, because, or in the T pose, because, um, instead of doing the door thing, simply because, there's not going to be any mesh pinching down here. Um, but you could. Uh, but yeah, if you rig it to the A pose, you're going to have problems even if the weights are perfect because mesh reacts differently than even if it has the same weight than if it was rigged here. And you want to do it to the, you want to do it to the original shape anyway. You want this little bump here because if you made it in Marvelous Designer to fit 45 degrees, this is a different bump. It's not going to react the same. So you want to make your mesh clothing fit this shape. You know, there's really not much of a difference between five degrees and in the legs. The legs seems to be the arms, the shoulders area is the most sensitive of not rigging into the correct bind pose and shape. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I told you there was going to be extra information that wasn't necessarily related directly to the procedure that I wanted to show you today. So if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Um, and, and so that's it for this video. And if I discover anything new, I will definitely make a new video. Um, just with working with all these avatar mesh bodies lately, I've discovered a lot of things and, um, you know, about Avastar and about Maya Star, you know, about that 
uh, you know, that one bone or those two bones, the lower back and the upper back, um, not having the joint segment, or at least for Maya Star, it, it doesn't have it turned on, which is a mistake. Uh, so you got to be aware of that. Um, and so who knows how many mesh bodies were made using Maya Star or the Maya Star skeleton by now. Um, I know Jake was, or I know Jake um, and uh, uh, Beleza used Maya, and I'm pretty sure he used Maya Star, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know he has Maya Star, but I don't know if he actually used the Maya Star skeleton. So, awesome. So, okay, I will talk to you later, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.